Hi guys. Oh wow. All right. I'm sitting at the Honda dealership waiting for my car. I had to get an alignment. And you know what? I'm going to be doing a video talking about how it is fascinating to me that every single time I try to get a problem fixed, I end up with more problems. And having talked to a number of people about my experiences, I'm learning that an awful lot of people are having the same experience. So that's not so much about this uh, video that I'm making right here, but I was at the Honda dealership. I'm waiting in the waiting room. And by the way, the Wi-Fi was so intense and I felt an exhaustion and I literally, I, I had trouble keeping my eyes open and sitting directly across from me was a guy dead asleep snoring. Heavy Wi-Fi. Okay, I'm watching the Weather Channel and I'm thinking to myself, am I listening to a new storm or are they still reporting on last week's nor'easter? Because I keep hearing nor'easter. And then I hear winter storm Quinn. Quinn? What? All right. I was at, uh, I, I was not home for a couple of days. I was at uh, um, a house watching their dogs when they took a few days vacation. And the laptop that I had was not working very well. But I was able to get onto some websites eventually. This is Windows 10, and it was incredibly slow. And why? I do believe that they are slowing down people's computers, the internet, deliberately. For when they announce the 5G operating in your area, finally, hey, I don't care about my health. I don't care if it's going to give me cancer. I don't care about my privacy. I just want to be able to download faster and have faster service. All right, well, I did get on to some websites. I do go to Drudge to read the head headlines just to find out what craziness do we have going on today. Not once did I come across Winter Storm Quinn. Did you know about Winter Storm Quinn? Maybe you did, but it is very uncommon to have a nor'easter than another one a couple of days later. And guess what? Another one is predicted <laughs> in a couple of days. Now, nor'easters are common up, nor uh, up north during the winter. However, nor'easters, three in two weeks? Uh-uh. No. Now, maybe this is the weather chaos due to man's interference in the natural processes, the geoengineering, the weather modification, uh, but I think that this is deliberate. Yeah, so now we have a, a close to uh, the Weather Channel reported that it was close to one million people without power. Understand, the nor'easter, the first one that hit, the Bombo Genesis, the bomb cyclone, knocked out power for hundreds of thousands, and many of those people have not gotten their power restored National Grid, which is the electricity company up north, owned by not an American, but a British company, apologizes. We're working as hard as we can to restore that power. Well, now more people are without power. And the Weather Channel announced that 10 or nine people died, went to Storm Quinn. It was the rare thunder snow and lightning, and a woman was hit by lightning, and an 88-year-old woman was brought to her death due to a tree falling on her. It was heavy, heavy snow with high winds, and the heavy snow snapping branches off trees, falling on power lines, and falling on an awful lot of cars. The damage has been significant. The Weather Channel was talking about a town in New Hampshire that is essentially on lockdown. Oh, because they're asking people, it's not a mandatory lockdown, they're just asking people, don't go outside. 
we are trying to bring our town back to life and all those working on getting that happening we don't want you meddling around with them and interfering and they need to have the roads cleared no one on the sidewalk a woman was hit walking down the sidewalk it was a private contractor plowing the streets of Massachusetts and a woman was hit walking on the sidewalk by that plow truck all of this creates an awful lot of trouble, especially when you have three nor'easters back to back. Thousands of flights canceled, delayed, trains stopping, uh, tractor trailers uh, sliding off the highway, cars stranded. Doesn't it sound like what I was making videos on last week? No, this just occurred. The rare thunderstorm uh, snow. Yes, people were hearing booms. Booms. Wow, winter storm Quinn was a weirdo. It was a weirdo. That's how we're describing our weather today. It was a weirdo. Wow, don't you wish people would just look into geoengineering and weather modification? There was three feet of snow in many places, uh, places from Pennsylvania to Maine. And what is the New York Times reporting? Oh, yes. We answer your questions about the storm. It's John Schwartz answering questions about these storms. John Schwartz writes for the New York Times. He, he covers climate change and the environment. Yes, it's climate change. If it's cold, how can there be climate change? That's a common question. Too bad people are asking the New York Times instead of doing their own research. Maybe they would come up with a different answer. But no, they asked the New York Times. Okay, they probably, nobody probably asked the New York Times. They're just lying to write this article and to blame it on climate change. So if it's cold how can there be climate change well weather is not climate you idiots we reporters we know we're smart okay weather is not climate weather refers to day-to-day -day conditions climate is about long-term trends and the long-term trends show a planet that is warming and mainstream media itself reported that that warming trend had ceased they, mainstream media, they report conflicting information. Are people not picking up the conflicts? I think they do this one to create an awful lot of confusion and get people to just throw up their hands and go, you know what, to hell with it. I don't know what's going on in the world. I'm just living my life, that's it. The other reason could be that they understand that most Americans now, uh, short term memory is gone. So they can report something yesterday and then report the exact opposite today and so well okay i don't think people really read carefully anymore so yeah that long-term trend the warming thing it's the reason why they stopped saying global warming because it ceased so they went to climate change oh my god all right well yeah uh weather bad and guess what guys you are you may very well be in for another nor'easter um but let me just show you something here okay uh sorry for the ringing phone but this is west stockbridge i lived there i lived in west stockbridge for i don't know three three and a half years i know exactly where this is i would come to the stop sign and then bear left and go around and it was a beautiful beautiful little New England town this is a typical winter in West Stockbridge nothing this is this picture every winter this is what you would see what you didn't see is nor'easter after nor'easter after nor'easter West Stockbridge braving the elements yeah, they're forecasting another nor'easter, and I, I think the start of next week.
This creates an awful lot of inconvenience. Schools closed. Jesus. Uh, the other news I just want to make you aware of, Geek Squad's relationship with FBI is cozier than we thought. Now, I had the Geek Squad come twice to look at my computer, and I remember sitting there looking at that geek, looking at my computer, and I thought to myself, wow, that would be Best Buy, Geek Squad, if I were law enforcement, if I was shady, deceptive, I'd want the Geek Squad working for me. Sure enough, FOIA requests. FBI paid Geek Squad employees as informants. Best Buy, Geek Squad. Working with the FBI. Now, these documents that were revealed uh, under a FOIA request are about Kentucky. Do not think that it stops in Kentucky. And many of the requests for documents the FBI has not turned over, so they're still working on getting uh, more documents. But yeah, FBI has um, Geek Squad informants. They refer to them as CHS. Yes, you geeks are confidential human sources, and I bet they feel really um, powerful. Hey, I'm not just a geek, I'm working for the FBI. I include this to let you know that you should not ever bring your computer to Best Buy or have a geek come to your home because they are not trustworthy. As you read this article, you may think to yourself, oh good, because this led to the prosecution of Mark Rettenmeyer, a California doctor who was charged with possession of child pornography after Best Buy sent his computer to the Kentucky Geek Squad repair facility. And most people would think to themselves, good, get these um, child pornographers or these people who are into abusing children off the street, into jail, get rid of them, and I'm right with you. But do we want this to be happening this way? No. We want, we want to be a country ruled by law. And we want everybody to be protected. That's what, that's the unfortunate um, part of living in a country that's ruled by law. Everyone should be protected by that law. And the Constitution, right? I mean, if you're using the Geek Squad FBI to look into people's material on their computer and turn it over to you, are you not circumventing their Fourth Amendment right? Yes, you are, but we don't care about the Fourth Amendment because we don't care about the Constitution anymore. The FBI uses Geek Squad employees to flag illegal material when people pay Best Buy to repair their computers. Don't go to the Best Buy. You, unfortunately, you better find somebody locally who's trustworthy because don't think it's just child porn that these Best Buy employees are turning over to the FBI. It, look, the Best Buy in 2008, they or the FBI memo in 2008 details how Best Buy hosted a meeting of the agency's cyber working group. And the Louisville, Louisville, sorry, division, the document said, or documented this. The FBI, Louisville, division has maintained close liaison with the Geek Squad management in an effort to glean case initiation and to support the division's computer intrusion and cybercrime programs. <laughs> computer intrusion. That's exactly what Best Buy is doing. 
intruding on your privacy and do you think these geek squads are going to turn around and say, hey, I found documents on your computer and I've got to turn them over to the FBI. No, you don't know what is going on. Don't go to Best Buy. What else is our lovely law, enforce, uh, uh, law enforcement up to? A couple. The man, 86. The woman, 90. 86, a Navy vet, veteran, was gunned down by armed intruders in his own home. And the wife filed a lawsuit against her husband's killers, the Santa Clara County Sheriff's Department. They were the killers of her husband. So the district attorney decided that the killing of Eugene Craig was ruled justified. Listen to these facts. Ruled justified. Now, what happened? The granddaughter called the Santa Clara Sheriff's Department and asked them to send deputies to do a welfare check on her grandparents because she hadn't heard from them in a week. So the deputies show up and they state that they called the home, they rapped on windows, and because there was no answer, they knocked down two doors in this elderly couple's home, and they entered the home, and then a cop opened the bedroom door and saw Eugene standing in front of his wife with a thirty-eight revolver and the cops shot Eugene, dead. He was dead at the scene. And the district attorney ruled that killing justified. How, how is it that a sheriff's department can be called to send deputies to do a welfare check, please check the safety of my elderly grandparents, and then they're knocking down doors and shooting the grandfather? dead. How does that happen? And that death is ruled justified. It happens in a police state. It happens when you don't have any protection against the police state. Now, what, what in your mind would be the common sense thing to do? You call the granddaughter and just ask her to call again. You call the granddaughter and ask, you know, do, do does your grandparents, do they have hearing problems? You go into the home. You don't knock down the doors, but you get access somehow, or you help. Cops know how to uh, jimmy a, a lock. But they bust down the doors, which terrified the couple because the couple thought that they, first of all, would you believe if your doors are being knocked down, would you believe the cop saying, we're police? You're doing a welfare check and this is your behavior? Okay, I, I don't know, I wouldn't know what to believe, but would you even trust the cops won't hurt you at this point? No, because they've been known. They've been called before in our country to protect someone and they end up killing them. A woman, and I remember and I don't remember the details, but she called 911 on behalf of somebody else and she ended up getting arrested. <laughs> I mean, the, the, okay, so we know that we've got a real problem here. But wouldn't it make sense to jimmy the lock, get inside, if you can't find, you know, anybody that has, you know, a key to the home, you have to wonder, okay, elderly, they may have hearing problems. And then you get to the bedroom door and you knock very loudly. Though, because of the circumstance here, 
This elderly couple did not know what to think. They thought they were being intruded upon, not by the police. But you would knock at the door. And, you know, in order to um, convince the elderly couple that you are the police, you open it a crack, you throw, you know, identification inside. You say you got the call from the granddaughter. She's worried about you. You try to de-escalate the situation. You don't just throw up in the door. See see the man that you're there to make sure that he's safe. You don't throw up in that door. See the 38 revolver and then shoot him dead. All right, two more things. Paralyzing nerve toxin found in recreational caught shellfish. Most dangerous levels in 20 years. All right, so the Bay Area's recreational seafood is, well, there's an awful lot of toxins found in that shellfish and the mussels and the clams and any kind of shellfish. Harmful, harmful levels, very paralytic, very dangerous, fatal. Santo Mateo counties. Refrain from harvesting and consuming mussels, clams, oysters, any kind of shellfish, and it applies only to recreational harvests. Commercially harvest shellfish are regularly screened for toxicity levels before sale. You cannot trust what you catch recreationally. You can only trust what is being put on the market. And of course, this has to do with the unseasonably warm winter. Great. So they got climate change in here. And they got, they got that fear thing, you know, scare people into not doing anything in terms of getting their own food. Make them so scared that they rely on us. They rely on the market. They can't feed themselves. It's a biotoxin produced by algae. The shellfish eat the algae, which can retain the toxin, which can affect the central nervous system if consumed by humans. And the symptoms are, though nobody has reported any symptoms, they're just warning you guys, it's, it, the levels of this toxin, it's really surprising. It's the first time that Matthew Willis, the Marin County Public Health Officer, has had to send out a public health advisory about this. It's potentially fatal. The symptoms, tingling around the mouth and fingertips, followed by loss of balance, muscle control, slurred speech, difficulty swallowing, severe cases, complete paralysis, and death from asphyxiation. asphyxiation. So, Rely on the market. Don't rely on yourself, whatever it is that you catch. Throw it back in. Don't eat it. It's warm temperatures, the flow, the salinity. The state imposes an annual quarantine on mussel harvesting from May to October due to elevated PSP risks from the warmer conditions, but they were unusually high this year. Now, I'm not saying that the shellfish doesn't have poisons, but it may not have any poisons. They could just be lying, or they could have poisons. It could be from warm temperatures, but we know that, well, our weather is being engineered. Engineered, okay, guys, oral sex. Stop having oral sex with your partner because many men are coming down with oral cancer. It's an epidemic of oral cancer due to you guys having sex with your wives or girlfriends. Who made this, who made this famous? It was Michael Douglas five years ago. 
when he candidly revealed that his throat cancer was linked to having oral sex. Hmm, did his doctor tell him that? Or is he just being used to bring men to get that HPV vaccine? So Michael Douglas, when he revealed his throat cancer came to having oral sex, I mean, would you even consider that? If a doctor didn't tell you that your throat cancer was, who, who, what doctor would say your throat cancer came from oral sex? Jesus. All right. Well, Michael Douglas helped publicize the fact that a pervasive sexually transmitted virus called HPV was unleashing an epidemic of oral cancer among men and men are four times more likely than women to be diagnosed with oral cancer, a hard to detect, hard to treat disease that has overtaken cervical cancer as the most common HPV related malignancy in the United States. So men line up, get that HPV vaccine if you want to have oral sex with your partner. And if you don't, well, there's an epidemic of oral cancer now. Jesus. Well, we've known that craziness is just going to continue and get more intense. And yeah, we are seeing this on a daily basis now.